where you stand. Is your life just life as usual? Or do you really understand the impact of Christ's resurrection upon you? Are you just sitting around waiting for something to happen? Or are you just sitting in front of your TV passing time away? Or are you spending your every waking moment in front of your computer punching into all of the different social media? See, I, I'm, I'm twiddling around on two. But I've been told that Oh, there's some more out there that you need to get familiar with, Pastor. I'm just like, I'm having problems with these two. <laughs> Why well, I need three, four, and five? Well, they told me Instagram and what's the other one, young people? Facebook, Twitter. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. <laughs> no, uh, Pinterest. or something, whatever it is. There's enough of, what are you doing? What are you doing? In the, but but the, the getting, back to, getting back to the message, in the midst of them sitting around doing nothing, Peter makes a decision to do something. He decides to go back to what he felt he knew best. He says, I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. Did you decide that you were going to go back to your former life? Wow. Mm. You know, Jesus got up out of the cross, got up out of the grave. I ain't really seen him. I heard from the women that, that he was rolled. I, I really don't know. They say the stone was rolled away, but, uh, and, you know, Peter, I even went in, in the tomb and saw his clothes there, but I, I ain't sure what really happened. So I'm going to go back to fishing. What are you going back to? Uh, uh, are you going back to clubbing, drinking, smoking, doping? What, what, what? Come on, say it, Pastor. Sleeping around? What are you? What? What are you doing? What are you doing? See, Simon Peter's decision to go fishing is not in and of itself all bad. Cause see, he was sitting around with seven, with six other men. They were all depressed. Oh, what was me? What's gonna happen now? What are we gonna do tomorrow? What are we going to do the rest of this afternoon? Anybody got anything they want to do? At least he was trying to generate some energy. Amen. I can imagine Peter saying this. You know what? I'm tired of sitting around here looking at y'all. Y'all looking at me. Well, I'm going to go fishing. I'm not just going to sit around and be depressed. And I'm tired of being depressed. Because y'all know how Peter was. He was quick. <laughs> Cut your ear off. He was quick. Oh, I'll never deny you, Jesus. So he says, I'm going to go fishing. And the said, you know what? That, that sounds pretty good. We're going to go fishing with you. So they got, they go out and they fish all night long and catch nothing. Now, you don't fish all night long. You're already depressed. The fact that you didn't catch nothing is not helping your spirit. You get further and further in depression. The atmosphere of discouragement is heightened. And they said, we can't even catch any fish. What, what this is showing me is this, that our self-willed service will bring about barren results. What do you mean by that? In other words, if you attempt to complete an action or a service and God is not in it, it will bring you nothing in return. Say that. Say that. But all was not lost. Because if you read all in the scripture, we find that a new morning dawned and Jesus showed up. Thank God for Jesus. Ooh, thank God for Jesus. He immediately began to do as he had done before. He began to ask the disciples questions. And the question he asked them was, y'all got any food? And mind you, they out there in the boat, and he on the shore, he said, y'all got any food? Yeah. And they hollered back, no! Yeah. And as he did before, Jesus began to go into his help mode. No matter what's going on, Jesus is always 
willing and ready to help you. Amen. All right. Yes, he is. I, you can be down and out, broke, busted, and disgusted. Yes. If you call upon Jesus, he's yes. always ready to help you. Now, the problem that most of us have is we don't like the way that Jesus wants to help. Because most of the time, he make you look at yourself and the truth sometimes hurts. But he began to tell the disciples, giving them specific instructions. He said, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. <laughs> Sounds familiar. When he first met them, he told them, get in the boat, push out just a little way. Cash your net, and you will have a great thing. I mean, it, it, it should have sounded familiar to Peter, but Peter was being Peter. That's right. It's amazing that every time Jesus has has an encounter and he has fish and bread, something happens. You know, he he fed the five thousand with two fish and five loaves of bread. So here he is. He tells them. Cash your net on the right side. And they cast the net on the right side and they had a great catch. And as they did that, John, the beloved one, recognized that Jesus had showed up. He was happy. He was, he was just, oh, he said, it's Peter, it's our Lord. Peter being Peter was always the one willing to take action first. He put his coat on and he jumped in the water. He said, I'm going to him. And he began to swim to shore. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get somewhere. And when I get there, we're going to go home and we'll all be happy, happy, George. He jumped in the water. Again, what are you doing? See, Peter acted. First he said, I'm going to go fishing. When he realized that Jesus was on the shore, he jumps in the water. You know, something about Peter and water. He walked on water when he wanted to get close to Jesus. Now he jumps in the water because he wants to get close to Jesus again. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus appears for a purpose. <laughs> he did not just appear on that shore to those seven disciples just for the sake of appearing. The presence of Jesus is linked with the sense of a calling. When Jesus shows up, he's showing up to let you know that there is a calling and a destiny upon your life. Paul found that, the, that Christ appeared to him in order to set him on the path of apostleship. What has Christ showed you when he appeared to you? Or the question better is, has he appeared to you? See, when you merge the sense of the call with Christ's presence, it should lead you to a question. Has anything changed in your life? Hallelujah. Has, has, has your way of thinking changed or do you still think the same way that you thought before he was crucified? Before he got up out of that grave. Has your way of doing business changed? Or still do you keep on doing things the same old way? Well see, if you keep doing things the same way, expecting to get a different result, you're a fool. Yes, sir. Come on. Remember, Jesus did not just show up for any reason. He had a specific reason and a purpose. Yes, Lord. Well, the first reason that he showed up was he wanted to perform yet another miracle because he understood that the disciples didn't quite get it yet. Well, so he showed up to perform a miracle. What was the miracle that he performed? First of all, when he hollered across to the water and asked the disciples, do you have any food? The text tells us that Jesus was already there. He had fire going, he had fish cooking, and he had bread. Mm -hmm. He rose from the grave. He was seen by the women at the tomb. He was seen by the two on the road to Emmaus. Now he's appearing before these disciples. And he had to perform a miracle in order to get them to believe. And the other miracle that he performed was that he provided them with a great catch of fish. Amen. What are you expecting Christ to do for you? What miracle are you looking for to happen in your life? Do you need fish? Do you need provision? Do you need 
fire to be purified? What is it that you are lacking? Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The disciples had fished all night long and they had caught nothing. But when Jesus showed up his, with his command, put your neck on the right side, they immediately had a big catch. What is Christ telling you to do in order for you to get the breakthrough that you need? What is Christ saying to you in order for you to get the overflow that you've been shouting about, praying about, screaming about, dancing about? It's not going to happen until you do something. The question is, what are you doing? 